is illegal to conduct business in the trading of wild animals without a license from authorities. The 11th of January 2011, the Uganda Wildlife Authority confiscated 140 wild parrots from Kaupu on Entebbe Road that had been captured from their wild habitats. These parrots were on transit to an unknown destination in an illegal trade. On the 22nd of January 2011, another consignment of 130 parrots was confiscated from Pondwe in Kasese by the Uganda Wildlife Authority. When these birds were captured from illegal traders, some of their wings had been cut to prevent them from flying. Some had broken limbs, others looked emaciated and traumatized because they had been squeezed in a small box by the captors. So right now what we are doing is to return these birds back into the wild. We have finished the process of rehabilitation and now they are fit to be taken back into the wild after they have undergone a process of trauma. We feel that they have undergone a good and thorough rehabilitation process after they have been treated of trauma and inf infection as well as wounds that they came and uh, presented with when they were brought with us. So this is a manifestation of our mandate and uh, once we receive wildlife, we're supposed to rehabilitate it and take it back into the wild. So as we go back into the wild, we are going to embark on a program to educate the communities around the protected areas to be able to preserve wildlife, conserve wildlife in Uganda, so that we can preserve it for, our, for ourselves and the future generation. Birds were taken to Uganda Wildlife Education Center for rehabilitation, treatment of wounds, trauma and infections for a period of six months. We examined all the parrots. Uh, we also treated, we did treatment of the sick, the injured, and also treated for subclinical diseases like stachosis. We gave doxycycline for over a period of 45 days. We ringed all the parrots for identification purposes. We dewormed using uh, ivermectin, which is good for internal and external parasites. We also gave prasquantel, which is good for tapeworms. We collected samples, which included uh, blood, fecal, oral swabs, and examined for abnormalities and uh, diseases. So we are sure that the parrots are in good health and ready to go back to the wild. The Ministry of Tourism, together with Uganda Wildlife Authority, deemed it necessary to return these birds into their natural habitat to stop them from having a domesticated nature where they would be safe from their earlier captors. Having kept these birds for six months, we felt as a conservationist, we are risking turning them into domesticated parrots, which is not our function as a conservation agency. So we had to get permission from Ministry and uh, we, we requested that we be allowed to release them back into the wild so that they are free once again. We are more than sure that they are wild parrots basing on their behavior. A team was dispatched to survey all the national parks and forests to see which one was suitable for the well-being of the parrots where they could be released. After a thorough search, it was agreed that these parrots be taken to Chibale National Park because of its availability of natural fruits which are the favorite food and because of security for the parrots. The parrots were then safely placed in spacious crates and carefully loaded onto Uganda wildlife trucks and driven a distance of over 300 kilometers. On arrival at the wildlife offices in Chibale, they were offloaded for feeding and resting because of the long journey. They had a good bite of their fruity food, including their favorite sugar cane and ground nuts. They were also examined for any injuries or deaths, but only one parrot, number 30, did not make it. But accordingly, it was a safe transfer. The following morning, the parrots were again loaded for their final destination, which is 25 kilometers inside the African jungle of the thick equatorial forest. 
aviary had been constructed ready to receive the parrots. It's at this aviary that the parrots had to rest for a period of two weeks before they could be voluntarily released into the wild. Here they fed again on the wild fruits and could get used to the wild environment. Today we are sure that they can now go back and live again in the wild. Uh, the area where we are right now was assessed and found suitable for the release of the 200 parrots because we, during the assessment we, we, we discovered there were all the, all the necessities that they require. The habitat is quite suitable near what their natural habitat is like because these are rainforest species. And the time of assessment, we discovered there were a lot of fruiting trees and, cli and climbers. And we feel this will provide enough food for the parrots. Some of the food traps were strategically positioned outside the aviary in order for the parrots to get attracted and move out of the aviary voluntarily when the time to release them comes. After ascertaining that the newly constructed aviary was in good shape, the parrots were critically examined to make sure that they were all in good shape. A sample of two parrots was released immediately to watch their behavior into the wild, and it could clearly be seen that they still had wild character. After two weeks, a group of journalists was dispatched and briefed about the African grey parrots. The main reason was to get acquainted with the information and to inform the world that the African grey parrot is an endangered species and therefore should be conserved. Now as we manage this wildlife, there are some species that uh, gradually have been listed as endangered. And uh, the African grey parrot is one such species that is listed by scientists as endangered. And it's endangered because of the high demand internationally as a pet. African grey parrot is preferred because of its very, very high intelligence. And that's why people want it as a pet. However, they were cautioned not to mention the exact location to the public for the safety of the birds from their captors. Now on 20th this month, after all those processes, we relocated them from Uganda Wildlife Education Center to this particular location. Of course, you've been informed that for the safety of the birds that are highly demanded, wouldn't want to disclose the release site. The journalists, accompanied by the Uganda Wild Earth Authority staff, embarked on a long journey to witness the release of this endangered African grey parrot back into the wild. Chibale Forest is one of the safest habitats for these birds because of its dense nature, availability of a variety of fruits, and the cooperative nature of the community around it. Besides, it is constantly patrolled by the rangers to ensure the wild animals living there are not poached. The journalists then embarked on a 25-kilometer bumpy road to witness the release of the parrots. I have to lead you, otherwise I don't want anybody to get lost in the forest. On arrival at the release center, the parrots were found in a sound and healthy situation, a sign that they had been rehabilitated and were now ready to join their relatives and friends in the wild. However, the journalists had to watch the proceedings of releasing the parrots from a distance in order not to scare away the parrots. A small outlet was cut through the aviary where the parrots would escape at leisure into the national park. Those that looked weak or could not fly high, or those that were sick were taken back to Uganda Wildlife Education Center for further care. A Uganda Wildlife Education Center, which hosts the national quarantine where I am manager, has been responsible for the husband of these birds, the rehabilitation and the general welfare. A number of other organizations have assisted, including the World Parrot Trust UK, which got very much interested, published from CNN, published from the local media, and various organizations 
including and not forgetting the Uganda Wildlife Authority who actually helped in the confiscation of these two batches of birds. So we are very grateful for their support in terms of technical skills, in terms of material, in terms of personnel and all the stuff that I work with at the zoo in Entebbe who have helped us really to ensure that uh, at least more than 90% of the birds that were rescued are still alive. And today we bring them here in the African tropical forest to set them free. It was a moment of joy to the parrots as they could immediately be seen in pairs in the nearby trees, a sign that they would enjoy their long-awaited moments of pleasure in privacy.